you put two positive charges nearby, they will repel. If you put two negative charges, they'll repel. A positive and a negative, though, would attract. This electric force has a way of acting at a distance. Charges can push on each other when, when they do not touch. And so it's kind of a weird thing because it's not like the way that we are. If we want to push on a car, we have to put our hands against the car and then touch the car. Charges are different. This force is sometimes called the Coulomb force, or it's sometimes called the electric force or sometimes it's even called the electrostatic. The force has many names. The electrostatic force is given by Coulomb's law. This is an equation. It uses two point charges, Q1, Q2, and it says the force is equal to the product of the charges divided by the distance between them squared times a constant. R is the distance between the two point charges. And this law applies to point charges, not spheres. We can extend it to spheres, though. And if we do, we have to make sure we measure R from the center of one sphere to the center of the other. The value K is called Coulomb's constant. And when we're working in air or in a vacuum, we know this number. It's in the data booklet. It has units of newtons, meters squared, coulombs to the negative 2. If we're not working in air or a vacuum, we can't use this number. Instead, we have to use an equation. The constant can be calculated from 1 over 4 pi epsilon where epsilon is something called the permittivity of the medium. It sometimes is also referred to as the electric field constant, and epsilon tells you how well the medium permits the electric field to form. Some media will actually kind of block the formation of the electric field. So if we take two charges and we increase their separation, what effect does this have on the force? Well, we increased the denominator, so the force would be smaller. This idea that charges can push without touching is a little bit odd. We say that the charges act through an electric field. Think about temperature for a second. At every point in space, there's a value of the temperature. And you could go into a room, hold a thermometer out, and measure the temperature at every location. As you measure the temperature, you're measuring something about the air. You're measuring the kinetic energy of the air. The electric field is kind of like this, but it's also kind of different. The electric field is there even in a vacuum. It's in all space. It extends out through the entire universe. And it's not some sort of property of the air or the molecules that you're looking at. It's a property of the space itself. The universe we live in has space which contains an electric field. So when you place charges, the way that they act on each other and push is through this electric field which permeates all of space. So if you want to measure the electric field, you have to use the equation electric field strength E is equal to the force on a test charge divided by how many coulombs are in the test charge. So you don't use a thermometer to measure electric field, you use something called a test charge. Let's get rid of that thermometer. A test charge is a small positive charge. 
maybe positive 2 coulombs. And you take it and you place it at a location where you want to test the field. When you place your test charge, you notice, hey, there's an electric force on this test charge. To get the strength of the field, E, you take the force and you divide by how many coulombs big the test charge has. So let's say your force comes to 12 newtons. The strength of the field at this location is 12 newtons divided by 2 coulombs, or 6 newtons per coulomb. And we just learned the unit for electric field strength is newtons per coulomb. The electric field strength is a vector. Not only do we have a magnitude, but there's also a direction. So if you wanted to draw the electric field, you would have to put an arrow at every point in space. And the arrow tells you how long or how strong the field is, and also which direction the field points in at that location. You might be wondering why the electric field strength uses the force but divides by the charge Q. There's a good reason for this. Let's say you walk in with your test charge, and your test charge happens to be 4 coulombs. You enter the room, and you're ready to use that test charge and measure the electric field. So you place that test charge at your first point, right here, let's say. And what do you measure? The force looks something like, oh, I don't know, maybe it's 16 newtons along this angle. And then you walk to the next location, and you bring your test charge with you. And you measure the force there. And it's maybe, oh, let's say it's something like 20 newtons. And then you walk out, ready to go do your calculations, bringing your test charge with you. Well, your friend comes in along behind you, and when she measures, she is using a 2 coulomb test charge. When she gets into the room and starts measuring, she puts her charge at the same spot. She says, well, hang on, the force that I see is only 8 newtons. And then she moves along to the next location, and she says, well, the force that I see here isn't 20, it's 10. And she leaves, and she goes and does her calculations. The issue here is that the force you measure depends on how many coulombs are in the charge. If you use 4 coulombs, you get these values. Whoops. And if you use 2 coulombs, you get half the value, half the force. Fortunately, when they both go to do the calculation at this point, they're either going to be doing 16 over 4 or 8 over 2. So they both get the same value, 4 newtons per coulomb. And that is the reason why we divide by Q, to make sure everybody measures electric field strength the same, regardless of how big their test charge is.